The Crusader era was one of the most troubled periods in history. Several European kingdoms came together to defend the Christian faith and to reconquer Jerusalem, which was under the rule of a Muslim caliphate. Many men, coming from various social classes, left their homes and families in order to respond to the request of the Catholic churches. They went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. These men dreamed of knowing the lands over which they had heard incredible stories in preaching and masses. Some were looking for wealthiness and the opportunity to receive noble titles. Some were already descendants of noble lineages. These belonged to the most devastating force on the medieval battlefields, the cavalry. To protect their social status and their own interests, several cavalry orders were created. Cavalry orders were composed of members who shared the same interests and ideals. Those orders had specific functions on the battlefields. The road from the European roads to Jerusalem was full of dangers. Violent groups of looters infested these regions. Many pilgrims ended up dying before seeing the Holy Land. To try to solve this problem, King Baldwin II of Jerusalem encouraged the creation of a new cavalry order. In 1118, the Order of the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon was founded, which became better known as the Order of the Knights Templar. The Order of the Knights Templar was founded by Hughes de Payens, a French nobleman. Together with only eight knights, he created one of the most famous military institutions in history. The initial objective of the Order of the Knights Templar was to protect the Christian pilgrims who were on their way to the Holy Land in search of religious comfort or to enlist in the armies of the Crusaders. With such a noble function, the Knights Templar received many financial donations from the European faithful and even from other cavalry orders. The Order of the Knights Templar grew rapidly in wealth and in the number of members who wanted to fight in the name of the Christian faith. The Knights Templar amassed immense fame and prestige. Pope Gregory IX exempted the order from paying taxes, considering that the role of this organization in the Crusades was extremely important. Because they were not obliged to pay taxes to the Church and the Crown, the Order of the Knights Templar accumulated wealth without equal. On the battlefield, the Templars used chainmail protection. Often that protection went from the feet to the head. They also used strong helmets and a wide, heavy sword, capable of causing damage even when it lost its cutting edge. The Templars were easily recognized in battle by their white robes, adorned with red crosses. They were the most feared group of knights in the Crusades. For all its fame, the Order of the Knights Templar was never numerous. At its peak, it had about 400 members. Against enemy armies, it was almost always outnumbered. The religious fervor and loyalty to the order of which they were part motivated the Knights Templar to organize almost suicidal attacks, causing terror while they advanced fearlessly towards death through the enemy lines. When they were not in battle, the Knights were ordered to lead a humble and modest life, similar to the lifestyle of Catholic monks. They had a strict code of conduct that they would have to follow in their daily lives. Among the rules, they avoided eating meat on Wednesdays, spent many hours in prayer and asking for clemency for the use of violence, kept their vows of chastity, and they were forbidden from eating the meat of their battle horses, even if the animal died of natural causes. Members of the order would also have to share the same bowl during meals and receive the same amount of food and wine, regardless of their status. The Templars were also forbidden to hug or kiss any woman on the lips or on the cheek, even if that person was their own mother. This ideal of poverty was represented in the famous image of two riders riding the same horse, a sign of humility and rejection of one's pride. The Knights Templar Order would also have to give a new opportunity to the Knights who had been excommunicated by the Catholic Church. The excommunicated knights would receive another chance to satisfy the divine will if they accepted the dogmas and virtues of the Knights Templar. In this way, they could participate again in the social circles of Christians. In the Templar order, there were different hierarchies. 
Members who proved their worth could reach new positions, such as treasurer, who took care of finances, or master of weapons to train new recruits. Each cavalry order was commanded by its leaders, usually members of the high nobility. The Order of the Knights Templar was commanded by a nobleman who held the title of Master of the Temple of Jerusalem. With the accumulation of victories in the fight against the Saracens, many of these leaders nurtured new ambitions. Some cavalry orders became political rivals. There were frequent debates about who had the right to keep the conquered lands and receive their taxes. The Templars were supposed to be obedient to the church only, but in some cases they acted on their own ambition, attacking caravans and even Muslim villages in search of objects of value. The Templars achieved many victories against the Saracen armies, but in 1187, the Battle of Hatton occurred. In that battle, a great army of crusaders, followed by Knights Templar, faced the Saracen troops commanded by Saladin. The battle was chaotic and brutal. The crusaders were defeated and lost the city of Jerusalem. That event weakened the prestige of many cavalry orders. The wealth of the Knights Templar was so great that they began to lend money to kings and religious leaders throughout Europe. As they charged no interest for their loans, they were well regarded by many lords and feudal lords. Commerce was another valuable source of Templar income. They sold goods produced on the various lands under their control, such as wheat and barley. The Order of the Knights Templar established itself as a banking entity. Some kings and popes deposited their money in the vaults of the Knights Templar, knowing that their money would be safe under the protection of the poor Knights of Christ. One of the kings who regularly borrowed from the Templars was Philip IV of France. Without being able to pay debts, Philip IV created alliances with other noblemen and with Pope Clement V to overthrow the Knights Templar order and confiscate all its wealth. The plan worked. The respected Knights Templar were accused of heretical crimes against the holiness of the church. Among the charges was the practice of obscure sects and the worship of pagan symbols. The Templars were persecuted, imprisoned, and cruelly tortured. Some fled to distant lands of Rome, like Spain, Portugal, and England. Still, many lost their lives while swearing to be innocent and defending the honor of the Templar order. On March 22, 1312, Pope Clement V officially declared the Order of the Knights Templar extinct. The last Templar leader was Jacques de Molay, who was executed at a pyre in Paris. Legend has it, that before de Molay was burned to death, he cursed King Philip IV and Pope Clement V, saying that both would be accountable to God within a year. And yes, the king and the pope lost their lives within a year. The remains of the sordid King Philip IV were stored at Poisy Convent. The site was then struck by lightning, which set fire to the convent, along with the remains of King Philip IV. There are many stories and legends about the Knights Templar Order. Most of its treasure was never found. It is still wanted these days. In antiquity, it was believed that the Knights Templars had found the Holy Grail chalice used by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. In their secret vaults, they also kept the famous Ark of the Covenant, where the tablets of the Ten Commandments were, among other sacred relics. It is also believed that the remaining members of the Templars created Freemasonry, preserving its secrets under the mantle of a new secret fellowship. However, Freemasonry was created only 400 years after the fall of the Knights Templar, making it difficult to connect with the original order of the Knights Templar. In 2007, the Vatican acknowledged the injustice committed against the order of the Knights Templar absolving them of charges of witchcraft and other heretical practices against the Catholic Church. The history of the Knights Templar is a great example of the enormous power of faith in an ideal, and as greed can lead a king to commit acts of treason. The Templars will always be remembered in our history with admiration and reverence. The world was consumed by the commotion of battle the Holy War had been declared. 
Thousands of warriors join the Crusades in the name of their faith or their own interests. Many left their homes and traveled a long distance to fight for control of the Holy Land. In Jerusalem, the Order of Knights Templar fought to maintain the territories conquered by the Crusader armies and protect the passage of Christian pilgrims. German knights came together from the far north, further increasing the number of Crusader warriors. The battles against the Saracen armies were deeply violent. Many Crusaders ended up badly wounded. In order to respond to the need to provide urgent medical care, cavalry orders specialized in the treatment of injuries and illnesses were created. The Order of Knights Hospitaller made every effort to fulfill its duty and serve as many people as possible, but the number of people in need was much greater than the medical units could handle. The Knights of the North ended up without medical care, many times even without basic first aid, because the Knights Hospitaller gave preference to the warriors of France and England. It was necessary to create a new order of cavalry, which could treat the northern soldiers and, at the same time, assist in the battles. During the Third Crusade, between 1189 and 1192, the Order of Teutonic Knights was founded. The Order of Teutonic Knights was composed mostly of German knights with knowledge of medicine. They followed the motto, Help, Defend, Heal. The Teutonic Order had a humble origin, depending on donations of money and food to survive. But, in 1210, the Teutons achieved great importance. The fourth Teutonic Grand Master was Hermann von Salza, who fought to raise the status of the Teutonic Order. Establishing new alliances with powerful kings and nobles, Hermann received new lands, villages, and castles, ensuring a valuable source of income for the Order. The Teutonic Knights stood out for the use of white robes adorned with black crosses. They quickly gained a reputation for being great warriors in battle. Unlike the Knights Templar, who had a humbler appearance, the Teutons liked to wear extravagant helmets adorned with horns and bird feathers. Because they were a strictly military order with few religious traits, they were also different from the Knights Templar. These characteristics made the Teutonic Knights brutal warriors with few limits on the battlefield. In 1211, King Andrew II of Hungary strengthened relations with the Order of Teutonic Knights, offering them fertile territories in the region of Transylvania. In return, Teutons would have to help in the struggle against pagan tribes invading the region and occasionally against the kingdoms of Poland and Russia. But this created problems because the Hungarian lords did not like the presence of German knights on their land. This mistrust augmented with the constant increase in the number of members of the Teutonic Order. Due to the enormous political pressure they suffered, the Teutonic Knights were expelled from Hungary and went to the north of Poland. This further increased the conflicts against the Polish armies. After the conquest of new territories in Poland, the Teutons created the State of the Teutonic Order. They had completely abandoned the objective of helping in the fight for the Holy Land. Already after the end of the Crusades, the Teutonic Order remained solid, participating in battles against the Mongolian invaders who devastated the whole of Northern Europe. The Order of Teutonic Knights existed as a military institution until 1809, when Napoleon Bonaparte ordered its extinction, confiscating all the territories of the Order. But this was not the end of the Teutonic Order. In 1929, Pope Pius XI re-established the Order, which ceased to be a military institution and became part of the Catholic clergy. The Order of the Teutons regained its original purpose, to help and heal people. It still exists today, maintaining hospitals and nursing homes in Austria and the Czech Republic. During the Crusader era, the world was quite violent. The constant migration of Europeans to the Holy Land also fostered a torrent of illness and disease. And when the terrible battles were over, many corpses were left behind, increasing the proliferation of pests like rats and flies. In some places, the situation was almost on edge. Urgent measures were needed. Jerusalem was the city with the greatest flow of people in this region. Due to its religious importance, the city was inhabited by Jews, 
Christians, and even Muslims. This large number of people who lived daily in the narrow streets of the city also increased the chance of epidemics. The First Crusade ended in 1099. This year, an establishment was founded to shelter Christian pilgrims in Jerusalem. It was the monastery of St. John the Baptist. To alleviate the suffering of the city's sick, a hospital was built inside the monastery. The hospital was run by monks of the Order of St. Benedict. They wore dark robes in their daily lives. Even with the hospital helping in the public health of the city, it was not enough to treat the Crusader soldiers, who often left to fight in territories far from Jerusalem. Soldiers wounded in battle had to be transported over a long distance to reach the hospital. Many could not resist that painful journey. On the other hand, sending monks without combat training to treat the wounded on the battlefields did not seem a good solution. It was there that Gerard Thome, one of the most important members of the monastery of St. John the Baptist, founded the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, also known as the Order of the Knights Hospitaller. The Monastery of St. John became the official headquarters of the Knights Hospitaller. There, the young recruits of the order studied and learned not only the art of combat, but also the art of medicine. The Order of the Knights Hospitaller had as its main objective to protect the monastery, to protect the Christians of Jerusalem, and to treat the needy. The motto of the Hospitaller was, to defend the faith and help the poor. To reinforce the ideal of humility, the Knights Hospitaller kept a simple appearance. Their robes had the dark colors worn by the monks of the monastery, but they also started to bear a white cross. By 1136, the number of members of the Hospitaller order had grown. With the acquisition of new castles and territories, it officially became a military order. The Knights Hospitaller became a life force on the battlefield. Not only did they treat the wounded soldiers, but they ferociously fought the Saracen armies. One of the most important battles, where the Knights Hospitaller were present, was the Battle of Arsuf, part of the Third Crusade. In that battle, King Richard the Lionheart was in trouble before the army of Sultan Saladin. Saladin's army had a numerical advantage. It consisted mainly of light cavalry and archers on horseback. The Knights Hospitaller were in the rear of Richard the Lionheart's army, where they helped the wounded soldiers. Realizing that the battle could be lost, the Knights Hospitaller abandoned their position and attacked while shouting their war cry, for St. George. The Knights' sudden attack surprised the Saracen army, causing it to retreat and allowing the remaining Crusaders to reorganize a counterattack. After the battle, King Richard the Lionheart praised the bravery of the Knights Hospitaller, further valuing the symbolism of the order. Around 1278, the Knights Hospitaller began to wear the color red in their battle tunics. It was a color used mainly by the leaders of the order. After 1530, the Hospitaller order established itself on the island of Malta, south of the island of Sicily. They remained in Malta until 1798, when they were forced to leave the island after an attack by Napoleon Bonaparte while the French Emperor was on his way to Egypt. Napoleon deceived the Grand Master, who commanded the island's castle, saying he only wanted to replenish the provisions of his ships. But when they landed, Napoleon's troops attacked the knights. The survivors were expelled from the island. The Hospitaller Order also had a strong presence in Portugal. Some members were part of the nobility and even members of the Portuguese royal family. The Brazilian emperors Pedro I and Pedro II were part of the Order of the Knights Hospitaller. Finally, the order moved to Rome, where it is still active today. The Order of the Knights Hospitaller no longer does military training. Its work is focused on health care, maintaining good relations with the governments of several countries. The Hospitaller Order still maintains properties, such as a military fortress on the island of Malta a castle on the island of Rhodes, as well as churches and some emergency rooms spread throughout Europe. The incredible story of the Knights Hospitaller has not yet come to an end. The members of the order traded the fight on the battlefields for the noble purpose of saving lives.